<laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. We're here today for the Village of Aramont, uh, Tuesday, May 9th at 11 o'clock via Zoom for the Community Design and Review Committee. Our first application is the Har Shalom East um, proposed addition to an active cemetery and the merging of lots at 36 Hillside Ave for proposed preliminary site plan. You going, Paul, or me? Um, I don't stand on formality, Dave. So you can you can go and present your plan, and I'll fill in wherever I think we need to discuss. All right. So what what we've tried to show here is um, they're taking a lot uh, off off to the east of the existing cemetery. Now the existing cemetery, you know, has been approved, it's built, it's in use. Uh, there's three lots on the east side, uh, one on the road, one in the middle, and one in the back. And they, they purchased the back lot. And the proposal is to ask uh, for that to become a cemetery. And through this process of the site plan, we would then abandon the property line that's contiguous and make it one big lot. Uh, the cemetery is going to be very limited. It's uh, just 240 grave sites. Uh, they don't foresee any expansion in the future. Uh, the access to it for the people that are uh, going to the grave site would be parking in the original site plan at 40 some lots and and walking back uh, we created a, a ramp from uh, the existing loop road down into the site and then the grave sites are placed as you see on page three the grave sites are placed in the back of the lot uh, currently the lot has a garage driveways and a house on it and our map shows that we're going to eliminate all that um, we have a mistake on the table. I actually changed the table and I, uh, we left it on there as a mistake that the original coverage is 13, but uh, the proposed coverage that we have on just this lot would be 9% or less, depending on what we do. Um, the ramp, and the driveway that we were talking about, that's going to be gravel, but the ramp would be solid. So that's the inclusion in the in the coverage. We did receive, if you remember, a variance for the original cemetery to 9%. This is going to be actually eight point something. So we'll say 9%. So it would match that approved variance. Uh, and that that's it. There's no, no other just access into a 20 foot wide driveway widening the existing driveway to the east, whatever amount it takes to make it 20 foot. And um, that would be it. That's the proposal. And if it's approved, then we would merge the lots. That's all I have. I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah. I have a procedure question. Do we need to get a variance on this uh, this lot for the nine percent since it's not part of the original lot? Um, well, really, this is going to be like an amendment of the existing site plan to add this additional parcel into the main cemetery. So, from from my standpoint, as long as we remain within the easement that was. I mean, the variance that was granted for the cemetery of 9%, then we're covered by the uh, approval that was granted. This lot is not part of the cemetery right now. It's an individual lot, and it won't be part of the cemetery until after the procedure. Well, it'll be part of the same thing, right? So the application will be basically be, uh, I think you guys require resubdivisions for joining two lots. Is that correct? So the application is basically the nature of an amended site plan and resubdivision to make it all one big lot. And we're gonna count the, um, the um, coverage with both lots combined, which will be within the variance that was granted by the zoning board. 
Chris, what's your take on that? I would seek a, a variance for the additional lot. Do, do we given need that it's two, uh, given that it's two separate lots now, I, I would, I, we need a variance for, for the whole thing. Well, Chris, before you, before you render an opinion, let's, let's um, think about what we're doing and take mm -hmm. a look at the resolution that was of, of the variance. We're talking about a cemetery that was 19 acres that received a variance to allow 9% development coverage. And now we're talking about a cemetery that's going to be 21 acres that's still going to have 9% coverage. So we're not increasing the coverage above the variance that was granted by the zoning board. So if, if I mean, before you think your position should be because we're adding more property that that we now have to go back down to three percent. Um, I, I think we should we should look at it and and not make a, a snap decision that the variance is necessary. Paul, I, I I'm fine not making a snap decision and rendering an opinion now. If you want to provide me some case law that um, that when additional lot is added that the, the previous variance for lot coverage applies to the full thing. I'm happy to look at that and that could easily change my view on it. Okay. That'll be fine. Um, John, you wanna go through your letter? Sure. Uh, under the planning portion of the review, uh, our general seeker comment that this would be considered an, un an unlisted action and require a coordinated view review. The seeker resolution uh, will need to be prepared if and when the, the, the board is ready to render uh, a seeker resolution. Um, comment two is just noting that this is uh, a permitted use. It is a permitted use in the RR50 zone of the village. Uh, comment three, I will defer entirely to, um, to the attorney, um, the original, review that I did clearly indicated a variance was required, but now there's uh, a question since the, the lot coverage has been reduced uh, from the original application, understanding of course that we're now adding additional acreage. <clears throat> uh, comment four, I'm asking for a long form EAF. We currently, we have a short form. Um, Agency reviews, comment five, I know it's early, but I always throw it in there so that uh, we make sure we receive word from them before we, we move the project too far along. Uh, under comment six, I don't think this requires a GML, but I could be wrong. I know it's not on a, on a, on a, on a state or, or county road, but I don't know if the nature of the use warrants a GML, but it doesn't appear that to be the case. Excuse me, John, on the GML, um, I did ran the GIS report and it did, and we did get one the last time the cemetery okay. was before the board. So I would send out for it, just so you know. Okay. So then uh, comment six uh, needs to be modified to say that the uh, GML review is required. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I'm asking that a note be placed on the plans that there are no wetlands on site. Um, I don't believe there isn't, and there wasn't any identified in the short form, but uh, I just want to make sure we have a note covering that. Uh, I'm asking the engineer to discuss uh, any additional traffic impacts and the need for a traffic study. Uh, if that's the case, I don't know. I know this is an addition to an existing cemetery, and I don't know whether or not traffic conditions will change. So uh, depending upon what the response is would dictate whether we need to investigate traffic further. Uh, let me just go through my engineering comments quick, and then you can discuss which ones we, we feel is necessary. Um, I'm asking for some more clarity on the, uh, on the subdivision portion. I know that we're taking one lot and we're transferring it over to the, to the existing cemetery, and then the internal lot line will be deleted. Uh, but I think it's a little bit unclear on the plan, and I don't think the county... Um, the tax map department, filing department will understand it. I think we need to designate lots one and lot two because uh, this is a proposed subdivision or at least identify them with the tax parcels and the total acreage before, the total acreage after so that it's very clear and the internal lot line to be deleted uh, so that it's very clear when this, if and when this map's proved that uh, there won't be any problems in the county filing department. <clears throat> 
Uh, comment two, I am noting that a, a simple SWIP is required. Uh, the total area disturbance exceeds one acre. And I know it's an acre or so of site disturbance that's associated with uh, grading and placement of, uh, of uh, uh, cemetery plots. Um, and I'm also noting that it appears that uh, post-development flows will be less because the total impervious area, if I'm not mistaken, will be getting less. So therefore, I don't think a, a full uh, uh, a full SWIP is required, but a simple erosion and sediment control SWIP is required. <clears throat> uh, please note the uh, total area of disturbance on the plans. Uh, Let's see, uh, I guess my one comment here talks about the possibility. I mean, the idea would kind of be, if I'm not mistaken, to keep the, the whole cemetery together, possibly with, with one access in and out, and also would eliminate cemetery traffic coming in from that existing, I don't know, it's a private road serving three lots. So is there any way it's possible to, to have access into this future expansion section 21, just part of the cemetery with its, its access directly off of the existing driveways that are there, roadway driveways, uh, would eliminate the need for anybody associated with the cemetery from having to use that other that other gravel drive. And because the home that's there now is gonna be removed if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> that's comment four. Uh, a comment five denoting that it appears more than five parking spaces will be required for the cemetery addition. However, it is noted that there are existing parking spaces associated with the original cemetery, which this section will become part of. So I guess the question, now that it's been made clear, is the combination of the two parking spaces sufficient or do we need more than five parking spaces? Um, <clears throat> I would assume if this section is is fully uh, uh, usable from from the original cemetery with access in and out that you could take credit for the uh, parking that's existing. But if it's not, um, I, I really think you need more than five parking spaces. <clears throat> uh, there's some platforms that are shown on the plans. I'm not 100% sure what those are for. If you could possibly explain that and. Uh, consistent with other cemeteries, cemetery additions that we're asking for some test pits to be done to verify the soil is acceptable for, uh, for burial purposes. Um, and I'm asking for some buffer screening to adjoining parcels. And there's some uh, appropriate engineering design details that need to be included on future submittals that typically don't show up on a first time CDRC meeting. <clears throat> That's all I have. <clears throat> Well, if I could respond to John's comments on the, on the engineering, I think really um, most of them could be cleared up by a better map. So I'm going to revise the map. I, I got the same comments from Paul, although I thought it was very clear it's not. So I'm going to revise the map to clear up that first page and, and make it uh, so you understand what's happening easier. And then we'll put the tables on. And okay. uh, as far as accessing the cemetery, uh, keeping the access, I'll say internal, instead of using that uh, uh, access driveway, uh, I'll talk to the client about that and get back to you. And um, the, the, the platforms are part of the ramp. We're showing the ramp uh, run of being, I think, 40 foot, then a platform, then a ramp run of 40 foot. So that's just a uh, sidewalk ramp from uh, the existing cemetery down to the proposed section 21. So the, the topography but, is much lower on section 21 than the main cemetery? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's about eight, eight, eight foot at least, yes. Okay. It's, it, look at the drawing, it says there's a 12 foot retaining wall in there. Yeah. So it so goes back and run it to the, yeah, yep. What is that ramp going to be made out of? Is it going to be masonry or is it going to be, you know, like a deck? No, 
we we haven't given it much thought. We did discuss it, and there was other things discussed, but we haven't discussed on the construction of that. We we would have to give you a solid answer on that in a future mm. submission. Would it be possible to tee off the access road at the bottom part of that lot, at the south part, and come straight, you know, across the width of the lot, and then curve into the parking area? It's something, it's something we looked at. It, it would be, um, it is possible, but it would be like a ten percent grade, mm. and we were, I don't know, we we batted that back and forth, and I'll, I'll have to talk to the client again. I understand what you're because if they, trying to do. by doing that, if I'm not mistaken, then because uh, right now the, the if it's such a large difference in topography, the only way a vehicle can get back to section 21 is to use the existing gravel driveway off the road. Right. But if but if it if that scenario were used, that would essentially allow all of the parking and or driveway internal road system to be used for section 21, which is a huge advantage. So the, the, the plan is that that this private driveway here is um, going to be limited to maybe for handicapped. Anybody that's coming for the main funeral will park in the, in the main cemetery and walk along the ring road and down to the, um, the cemetery plot. So we're not intending this to be like a designated parking for the cemetery. It's just a few spaces um maybe for a close family member or a handicapped member and they'll know to go down that road specifically but for anybody else nobody's going to be parking there except for uh, those situations that i mentioned so uh, whether we need five spots we probably don't even need five spots um so that that was the plan for that just so that uh, we're, we're not planning to create a new parking area for the cemetery that we're going to bring the public into it's it's going to be very limited and um only for certain certain matters i understand that entirely but the the i think i'd like to avoid using the access the, the current driveway access for uh we've had several several funerals in that cemetery that have caused parking issues and and uh police call outs and everything else so if we could try and limit you know i mean it's unfortunate this this is a private driveway that we don't need another another instigation or an invitation to cause more problems so yeah we could... we're, we're not going to designate it so nobody's going to know that's a parking area. it's going to it's going to have the same look <laughs> you can you can not designate it and people will know to park there oh, well. I that, know you know that works. That that that's not that's not the plan at all. And I um, know, but uh, you know we're certainly willing to to do what we have to do to oh. make the village happy and I, I, address well, their concerns. I'm, I'm never happy, so that's not going to work. But I'd like to see <laughs> details on the ramp. <laughs> I got I got to remember that one. <laughs> Oh. My wife, would, my wife would be happy to verify that as well. If you need a, 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 a corroboration, <laughs> you, need, you need proof. <laughs> okay. Well, at least take a look at it, and if you, we can comply we with our request, we'll see if we can come over something interesting. I don't think fire truck access is going to be an issue. I don't see there's going to be a lot of uh, things back there to burn. So no. No, there's nothing. They could probably hit the entire lot from the access road with a hose truck. Yes. There's nothing really back there, right? I mean, it's just cemetery yeah. plots, right? That's, that's it. And in case of a zombie apocalypse, who knows? They might need to get back there with a hose, but uh, it's, it's nothing. We've there. got bigger problems if we have a zombie apocalypse. I know. <laughs> you guys are on a roll today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's been a long week and it's only Tuesday. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. <laughs> well, I'll talk to the client about access and see if we can I, 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 I think solve everybody's concern. I, I think, uh, I mean, the plan is, is I would like to see it come back to one more CDRC so we can tidy up these things and, and then I 
would have no problem, at least on my end, sending it to planning. Yeah, I, and I think um, to take care of one of your concerns that they maybe want to do a subdivision plat and make subdivision plat one of the sheets in the series so that um, that can that be, be extremely off. helpful. Yeah, because that's got to be recorded, right? That's the way it's got to be recorded, and and they when they can't fully understand, you know, that's when the phone calls start coming in, and it's happened to me a few times uh, where you actually have to revise the map, then go get them re-stamped and so forth because the, the, the filing department won't accept it un, un, unless it's completely 100% clear what lines are being deleted, what's being added to. And so that's yep. going to save you headaches down the road, I think. Yeah, no, it's it's a good suggestion that uh, we have a formal subdivision plat as part of the plan set to get recorded so that it's separate from the site plan. Okay. Anything else? Um, just for the record, I wanted to note the Tallman Fire Department letter dated April 28th. Um, so I sent a copy to everyone, so it's on there. They just want to make sure that the board reviews possible traffic concerns, which John also brought up. In terms of uh, other projects that are planned along Hillside, and that can only be accessed from Saddle River Road. That's it. So you'll come back to CDRC? Yes. All right. The um, May 25th is the deadline for the June 13th meeting, Dave? Yes. Okay. I, I sent you the, you have the calendar. So I, I have the brand new calendar. I The one I sent this morning is the brand new planning board calendar, yeah. not the CDRC. Well, I, I, I like it. I cherish that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. Thank so you for marking the wells on this drawing as well. What, was that? So what did you, you say, Lou? Wells. Wells? Oh, the wells, yeah. Yeah, because if, if they ever do, do side, decide to expand it, that well is, if you can go right up to the property line, that well is far enough away. That's not an issue. Okay. Yeah, well, we had some experience from that from the first go around. Yes, we do. Wanted to know where wells are and maintaining proper separation. So, yeah, we got it. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Have Take a care. good day. The, the next applicant is the Minic. I, I apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly. The Minicutch School at 14 South Dubon Ave. It's a proposed school with a proposed preliminary site plan. And I believe we have Rachel Barisa's engineer. Um, I don't know who else is on Coleman. Uh, the expediter. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Coleman. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Okay. So, um, I don't know, Rachel, or who, or whoever. I can start. Sure. Project. Um. So this is the first time we're here for you before you for this application. Um, they're proposing a school. The existing house that's on the lot would be removed. Um, it's R40 zone, so the school is proposed for 450 students, um, ages 3 to 13. Uh, we gave some information about the scheduling and everything. Um, based on the square footage, they would need 165 parking spaces. Um, there's no students that are over 16, so they don't need additional for that. We're providing 57 parking spaces. A parking variance is, re is requested. Um, they have 30 staff members, so 57 parking spaces is still in excess um, of the faculty. Um, and as I said, the students are only 3 to 13, so nobody is of a driving age. Um, and this is our first time here, so we'll see what everybody says. We have a spot in the front for the buses to drop off. Um, the cars, if there are cars that are coming to drop off or teachers to park, they can go around to the back um, and bypass where the buses are in the front. John, do you want to go through your, your memo? Certainly. Uh, under the planning portion of this of this review, uh, this project 
shall be a class one, uh, excuse me, a type one action under seeker, and it will require a coordinated review and a seeker resolution is, is required. Uh, uh, comment two, I'm just going to get right to the point of the, of the uh, planning comments that, uh, uh, that we feel that uh, given the intensity of this proposed use on this specific site, that this office rec recommends the adoption of a po positive declaration under seeker and the preparation of environmental impact statement. Uh, consistent with that, that we we want to see a long form EAF, and uh, there are potential environmental impacts will be evaluated once we receive the long form EAF. Um, this is a permitted use in the R40 zone. However, it appears uh, uh, to our office that uh, the amount and the size of this school is grossly oversized for this site. Um, so it should be considerably scaled down. And that's the first thing that we would like to see the applicants try to do, come up with something that's reasonable here because we don't feel that 450 students uh, can, that this site can support that. Uh, there's a total of nine variances required. Uh, excuse me, seven variances. Uh, we feel this is excessive. And uh, again, we recommend a significant reduction in the size of the school or to look for another suitable location for this site. Comment six uh, talks about the, the necessity for a traffic impact study prepared by a licensed professional engineer that's gonna be required. Uh, and uh, county planning, we believe, is going, going to need to be involved with this particular application. Um, I'm not going to go through all the engineering comments uh, because 60 to 70 percent of them are just small things, you know, like providing legends and things of that sort, water connections. Um, uh, I will note in the review that there does appear to be additional space on site for additional parking. So we're not quite sure why so many parking variance spots are requested when you have additional room for some additional parking. Um, a full SWIP is required. Um, I think a kind of a draft uh, SWIP was prepared. Uh, I don't think there was any um, green infrastructure design or water quality volume uh, provided, um, which is going to be a requirement for this this SWIP application, and it's going to ultimately have to be filed with the with the DEC. Um, the usual comments pertaining to the agency reviews. Um, the, the, the proximity of some federal wetlands, uh, to, it indicates that there are some, some wetlands. I don't know if they're on site, but if they're not, to please note on the plans that they're not. Um, some things like buffer landscaping, uh, a lighting plan is required. Um, I guess uh, to, to sum it up, uh, we are asking for uh, the maneuver, maneuverability fire truck plan to verify that you can get to the rear of the building, which we feel is important. Um, in summary, that uh, our office feels that the uh, that the size of this school is 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 much much larger than this this site can support. <clears throat> and with that, I'll turn it over to the board. <clears throat> um, I just want to put in the record that the Tallman Fire Department, which everyone has a copy of the letter dated April twenty eighth, um, talks about some of the items that John brought up. Also is the dead end street and um, the turnaround and the proposed two office building across from this at 10 South Devon. And then you have uh, the town of Ramapo right next to it. And there is right now a traffic light that's not in use that might have might have to change. So that's kind of the gist of their letter. So I'm just recapping it. Lou, do you have anything? No, I, I, my I, my review is the same is similar to both the fire department and and John's. It's the the concept is way too big for the site, and it's going to cause other issues. I mean, with if I'm, without even taking into the account the other two office buildings that are going on the same dead end street. Um, plus, the only uh, the only question I have at this point is: Are there going to be any buses stored on the site? because that would further complicate the traffic flow issue. I'll confirm with the applicant. At mm -hmm. this time, we did not have bus parking shown, but I will confirm. Um, 
John, before you make any determinations about recommending a positive declaration, if you receive the long EAF and you feel that that's enough, will you still want like a whole environmental impact st statement? Uh, I, I, my opinion is unless this project is scaled down, yes. Um, you know, the comment about the children being three through 13, great, they're not going to be driving, but inevitably parents will pick up their children. Not everybody will take the school bus. There's no way to control that. And the reason for the number of parking spaces required is because they're required. They, they, they need them for the number of, of people who are going to be on site. And there's other issues with regards to uh, the number of variances, uh, the size of this structure on this particular site. So the long form EAF um, will definitely help to clarify that. But I think unless this, it is a permitted use in the zone, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but the size yeah. of this structure is, is, is uh, uh, much larger than we feel this site can support. Okay, it's only over the FAR um, by 0.04, but I'll talk to them about it. Um, I know it's more like the development coverage and the parking. Um, I do have a question. The max height is not listed in the bulk table. Is there a reason for that? I'm going to have to confirm it with the architect. Okay. Are they going to need a variance for that too? Because you're talking about three floors, right? Uh, yeah, I have to confirm with the architect what the height right. will ends up being um, when they do it with the based on our elevations at the end. So Correct. I slope can on the lot's pretty severe. All right. All right, so you'll be resubmitting for CDRC, correct? Yes. Okay. Anything else, anybody? All right. No. Thank so, you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.